Hey, Internet. You know me as JD, also known as S3 Prototype, and this is Flag Panda, better known as TJ. Rooster Teeth Expo 2014 or RTX went down in Austin, Texas during 4th of July holiday. That freedom celebrated weekend was chock full of Rooster Teeth goodness. This mini pod episode, we got to interview the mastermind of Rooster Teeth, Gus Salora. TJ and I were graced with his presence. We say it because the man was dressed in a cape. He talks about life at RT, red versus blue, the Expo's origin, and life of Gus outside Rooster Teeth. Before you sink your ear teeth into this Juicy Ripe interview, you could find Gus and all his work at roosterteeth.com, youtube.com slash roosterteeth, or at Salora on Twitter. Help us help you get all the nerdy knowledge and all things geek. Click that like and subscribe button and visit altness.com. Without further ado, the tall Mexican himself, Gus Salora. Ladies and gents, I am here at uh, Rooster Teeth 2014, uh, my first run around, and I actually get to sit down with Gus Sorola. Sir, how are you doing today? Doing well, keeping busy. You've been running a mile a minute. I mean, this RT is pretty much like the giant nerd culture cheers. Everyone knows your name and bumps into you and gives you high fives. Um, so how many years has RT been going on? Uh, well, RT uh, convention. Uh, this is our fourth year uh, for RTX. The first year was in 2011. Um, that event was actually in a field, though. That wasn't in the convention center. Uh, 2011 was kind of a fan event. We had a... Uh, I think about 600 people show up for that. And then 2012 was our first year in the convention center. So 2012, 2013, and 2014 have been our three years in the Austin Convention Center. And to what I've, what I've heard, it's always been doubling in size. It's always getting bigger. There's no stop on the RT train. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get a brief history on all this. How did, you, uh, how did this all come together? I mean... So we, um, we noticed that there were... We've been wanting to do our own event for a long time. And we noticed that there were a lot of fan events all around the world, you know, people who were fans of the content we were creating would meet up uh, and invite us to come out. So, and we felt bad that we couldn't go at all. So we thought, why don't we have our own event and invite everyone to come here? Um, so that was kind of the genesis of it and it's kind of grown from there. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, there's lines that start hours before actually getting to you guys. You guys are local celebrities here in Austin. Do you get stopped outside of, uh, out of the office and asked to, you know, hang out, play cards or what have you? Yeah, it happens uh, quite a bit where uh, I'll just be walking along, you know, going to the store and uh, people say, oh, hey, you're Gus. Or, uh, and it's, it's a real surreal experience, you know. We've been doing this for 11 years and it's still really humbling. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm so appreciative of everyone uh, who, uh, who's a fan of, of what we do. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't do this if people didn't like it, you know. And, of course. Uh, and we're super appreciative of the fact. So um, for Rooster Teeth, what is necessarily what you do? I, I know there's, you have the animations, you have the podcast, the actual channel, a lot of the management stuff, but what, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I have a variety of responsibilities, you know, mm -hmm. one of which is uh, RTX. I also help oversee what we call our broadcast division, mm -hmm. which encompasses all of our podcasts and live streaming initiatives. Um, I take care, anytime we go to an event, I take care of that as well. Um, and then, you know, of course, I do some voice acting, acting, uh, help produce other people's products or projects and uh, just basically whatever needs to get done that's definitely cool is there is there anything on the plate that you feel you want to do um outside of you know the, the neuroculture kind of deal outside of youtube and stuff like that maybe play an instrument or go out somewhere uh, no you know i'm really happy with uh <laughs> with everything i do right now i wish i had a little more free time to play some more pc games i uh, I, I i play i i've been in the process of getting rtx going this year and also uh moving i've been moving to a new place so okay. uh, i haven't been playing as many games as i want to over the past month or so so i'm hope once rtx is done i think i'm just going to binge for a week and just play games nonstop. just for a week uh yeah that's all that's all, that's it'll all, take. To get, that's all it'll take to get caught up and then i'll just go back to my normal play time of course um how did you fare with the steam sale that just happened i didn't buy anything because how did you getting, stay so strong? I was getting ready for, I didn't see it. I was getting ready for <laughs> RTX and my gaming PC was packed up because I was moving. Oh. So I, I, I guess I could have looked on the app, but yeah. I, I was so busy I didn't get a chance. So I, 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 missed, I missed the sale. It's all right. You, there's, there's plenty of games out there. Is there any games that you're looking forward to in uh, 2014, the rest of the year, as well as 2015? Uh, you know, of course, I got to look, be looking forward to some of the big games we have here on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we got Destiny and Sunset Overdrive out there, which are two games I'm super excited for. Uh, you know, going forward into 2015, there's some PlayStation 4 exclusives I'm looking forward to, like Uncharted 4, The Order 1886. Of course. Yeah, I mean, there's just, uh, I feel like we're, we're in that time that's really exciting where new consoles have launched and uh, we're, we're almost a year in. So we're getting to the point where 
people are really becoming developers are becoming really familiar with the hardware so we're gonna start seeing some cool stuff it's just like an, you're watching a, an infant being born and then you're like i can't wait for it to walk and yeah. talk and do all these other things yeah. um so you've done voice acting in halo as gus yes uh-huh. i was uh, i did a voice in uh halo 3 and i believe i was a an ai companion in halo reach okay is there is there any projects that I'm you? Sorry, I should clarify. Oh. Not an AI companion. I was a marine who was AI, AI controlled. Not, not not an AI companion like a like a Cortana or anything like that. Yeah. Let's not get technical yeah. or anything. Um, is there any projects that you want to do? Uh, you know, for other games and stuff like that. You want a voice actor for I don't know for a Metal Gear game yeah. or. Um, you know, I, I don't really consider myself a voice actor. It's just kind of something we we kind of did, you know, because we didn't have any money to pay real actors. Uh, but I'm really jealous. Uh, you know, we did a supplemental podcast recently where I talked with Kumail Nanjiani, who's a comic, mm-hmm. and uh, he was just in an episode of The Walking Dead, uh, uh, the video game, okay. The Walking Dead season two. I think he was in episode four or three. It was it, it just came out recently, and uh, I'm super jealous of that. <laughs> I want to be in uh, in a Walking Dead video game. Man, Walking Dead—they get you at the heartstrings. Oh, like yeah. you become personally invested into it. Um, so, what was your end results in season one? Since you have you played through uh, yeah. the Walking Dead? Are we in a spoiler territory? What's going on? Oh, well, it, the game's like two uh, okay. two years old. I'm, uh, I'm sure someone has played through it. Yeah, I played all of season one, and I played I think if, yeah every current episode of season two as well. Okay, yeah, because the seasons are was it episode three right now? Is it three? Or three or four? I think I think it's four. Okay. So how did you fare in the first one? Did you lose any of your cast? Uh, yeah, I think I did. Uh, let me. Th- I'm trying to think back to it. I, uh, who did I lose? I lost. Oh, what's the, the the dorky kid's name with the the jacket? Um, Ben. I lost Ben. Okay. Um, who else? There's of course other characters you lose that you have to lose. Have There's to no lose way, way. Uh, to keep him. But I think Ben was the the one that I lost that I could have potentially saved. Yeah, I, I think I dropped the. I forgot his name in the bell tower when he was asking for help. Oh, was, yeah, that, that's him. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked at him like, "I, hey, dude, you're costing us too much weight." Yeah, he he <laughs> he abandoned Clementine when he was supposed to be watching her in the house. Yeah, and that's why I was like, "Nah, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, just going back to RTX, uh, how do you feel? Uh, you know, RTX is obviously successful. What's the next big step for next year? What do you, what do you guys want to plan doing bigger? Uh, you know, we just want to continue growing. You know, we want to have even more partners come out and uh, and bring more cool stuff so that we can have more attendees <laughs> come experience it. You know, it just it's it's a cycle that needs to to feed itself. So we've got to have more of everything, just all of it. Yes, check every box, mm-hmm. send the invite more. out. M O A R. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sitting down with us, man. Uh, this is really appreciate. I'm really appreciated uh, being here. Uh, so. Two things. I crowdsourced some questions from the crowd. Okay. Uh, one, are we ever going to see a montage of you being angry? A montage of me being angry. I think that's the Rooster Teeth shorts. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't, I don't know that we'll ever cut together a montage like that, but <laughs> there are plenty of great moments already. I, I think there's some already fan ones that already cut them all together. I was wondering if there was the official oh, one. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, how do you... How do you unwind? Obviously, you in the office is kind of stressful. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you unwind aside from playing video games or anything like that? Alcohol, lots of alcohol. What's the what's the drink of choice? Uh, if it's hard liquor, I like gin. Uh, specifically, I think Hendrix is probably my favorite gin, uh, or vodka. Vodka is good too. I'll drink a lot of Tito's. Uh, if it's beer, I always try different kinds of beers. Um, I'm a big fan of IPAs at the moment. Right now, my favorite is um, there's a company. What's it called? I forget what they're called, uh, but they make a beer called Palette Wrecker. They also make West Coast IPA. I forget what the name of the brewer is, but that's, I think, my current favorite. Nice. And one more. This was what right off the wiki page. How did you get the name Tall Mexican? Oh, I just I had to fill out an occupation uh, <laughs> on my Rashid.com profile when we first made our community site. So I just wrote Tall Mexican. Because people, whenever they meet me, they always say, you're a lot taller than I thought you were. <laughs> or you're a lot taller than you seem in the video. So yeah, yeah. And that happens. Every, everyone's either like not their size. Like I, I met Meg last year over at a, uh, which one? Pax East. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh hey, oh you're yeah. you're shorter than me. It's tiny. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, um, that's gonna wrap it up. This was a uh, Rooster Teeth 2014. Thank you guys so much for sitting down and Thank having a, a good 
nice breather of everything in the madness. Cool, man.